How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at delocalized electrons. Our objectives will be to describe what delocalized electrons are, their effect on the structure of the molecule, and determine when they occur. So let's uh, take a look. What, what do we mean by localized electrons? Let's start there. So localized electrons are electrons that are found in a specific region. So in this example, the bonding electrons are localized. You'll find the sigma bonding electrons along that internuclear axis. That's where they are. That's where you're going to find them. That's where they be. You'll find the pi bonding electrons above and below the internuclear axis. So those pi electrons are localized. That's where you're going to find them. So delocalized electrons, uh, you know, are the opposite. Sometimes electrons aren't localized. Uh, delocalized electrons aren't found shared just between two atoms, but between multiple atoms and locations. So when does this occur? Well, when we have a molecule that has multiple resonance structures involving pi bonds, we can have delocalized electrons. So if we take a look at this example, benzene. Uh, benzene has multiple resonance structures and you know, I'll spoil the surprise, but these electrons aren't just found in between these two carbons, they're found between all of the carbons. So sometimes the shorthand we use for benzene just shows like a ring because those electrons are delocalized. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So benzene's always like the go-to example for delocalized electrons. And if we look at carbon, all the carbons are sp2 hybridized. So you can see over here, I have three sp2 hybridized orbitals and I have an unhybridized p orbital still. So we end up with trigonal planar geometry around each carbon with an unhybridized p orbital. So if I'm looking at this, you know, you can see that it forms this hexagon shape. So I'm going to still keep that shape, but I'm going to ignore the hybrid orbitals. And I just want to look at the unhybridized p orbitals. So you can see at each point on the hexagon, I have these unhybridized p orbitals. Each of them have an electron in them. So let's see what happens with these resonance structures. So we end up with two for benzene. We can have double bonds between these carbons or, you know, why can't we have them between the other carbons? We can. So we end up with these two equivalently good uh, resonance structures on benzene. So benzene's actual structure isn't going to be one or the other, right? If it really was alternating single and double bonds with localized electrons, you would expect to see different bond distances. So for example, the double bonds could be 1.34 angstroms, whereas the single bonds are going to be longer, 1.54 angstroms. But when we actually look at the observed bond distances, turns out on benzene, they're all the same. They're somewhere between a single and a double bond. They're all 1.4 angstroms. Well, how can that be? This is where delocalized electrons come into play, and they can explain why we see the observed bond distances being what they are. So delocalized electrons, again, are electrons that aren't localized between two atoms. Instead, they move between multiple atoms, not just two, but more than two atoms. So in benzene, they move between all six carbons in the regions above and the regions below the molecule where the pi bond or the pi orbitals overlap. So what ends up happening is we have a whole region under that molecule where you can think of it as instead of there being a double bond between these two carbons versus these two carbons, all of those kind of bloop together to give you one big region above and below the molecule where those electrons can move across the whole molecule. They're delocalized. So we end up with electrons below and also electrons above that molecule. So instead of being shared between two atoms, the P electrons are shared amongst all six in benzene. So bond lengths reflect the delocalized electrons. Like I was saying, the carbons share their P electrons in the pi bonds with all of the carbons in benzene. So that's how we end up with a uniform bond length because those electrons move across the whole molecule above and below it, which is why a lot of times shorthand for benzene, instead of showing double alternating double single bonds, they can just kind of shorthand draw a circle, which it kind of looks like, like a nut for a nut and bolt, but that's, uh, yeah. So resulting properties, delocalized electrons lead to an increased stability of the molecule. So you can think of it this way. If you wanted to break a double bond, you just got to upset two atoms involved in that double bond. 
but with delocalized electrons, you're really messing it up for more than just two atoms, right? They're doing this multiple bond thing. They're satisfying octets. They're happy. And instead of just messing it up for two atoms, you got to mess it up for a bunch of atoms. So there's an increased stability. And in organic molecules, these delocalized electrons are responsible for a lot of the colors that we see in organic molecules. So how do you know, again, going back, how do you know if there are delocalized electrons? Well, ask yourself, are there more than one resonant structure possible? Do they involve pi bonds? If so, you got delocalized electrons, right? So with benzene, are there multiple resonant structures? There sure are. Do they involve pi bonds? They sure do. You got delocalized electrons. So try, try your hand at some of these here. I'll, I'll oop, draw the Lewis structures. Tell me, are there delocalized electrons? Let's take a look at the first one. Uh, are there multiple resonant structures for H2CO? No, there isn't. No, there isn't. So no delocalized electrons in the first one. Try drawing a little structures for the other two. All right, if we take a look at ozone, I know ozone has one Lewis structure that looks like this, but hey, wait a minute. Why did I put the double bond between these two oxygens there and not those two oxygens over there. The fact that I can ask this question tells me that there must be a resonance structure. These two resonance structures are equally good. All right, so I got resonance structures. They involve pi bonds. I have delocalized electrons in this example. All right, if I look at the nitrate Lewis structure, again, all right, I have a double bond between this oxygen and that nitrogen, but why didn't I put it here? Or why didn't I put it there? The fact that I can ask this question and they're equally good Lewis structures tells me that I have resonance structures. So now I got to ask myself, all right, I got resonance structures. Do they involve pi bonds? And the answer is yes. So NO3 minus also has delocalized electrons. I can expect to see delocalized electrons in that nitrate ion. So to summarize, can you describe what delocalized electrons are, their effect on the structure of the molecule, and also determine when they occur? Uh, I hope so. Goodbye. Okay,